Hey YouTube, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Roman and listen, it's a lot of shit going on out here in this world. And so we are back with another crazy crime story. And these stories always remind me to be vigilant, um, watch my surroundings and be careful who I involve myself with. So let's get right into this. So a Memphis police officer, he's in jail after actually confessing to killing someone while on duty. Let's jump right into it. So um, the girlfriend of Robert Brown and Robert Brown, he was a Robert. I'm sorry, Robert Howard. He was a 30 year old man. Um, she had last saw and spoke to her boyfriend um, on a Tuesday. I think it was January 6th. That was the last time she had spoke to um, her boyfriend. And that was around 5 p.m. And so I think later that day and earlier the next day, she had been trying to reach out to him, but he wasn't responding. So she had an app on her phone where she could track down his location. So she was able to track down his location and she drove to the location and she actually found the phone. And so now that she had the phone in her possession, she then reached out to the police on Wednesday around 8.30 p.m. and she reported her boyfriend, Robert Howard, missing. And um, so the investigators, um, they began to launch an investigation, determine, you know, where he is and where he was. And so basically the police, um, after their investigation, they had basically come out and determined that um, a Patrick Ferguson, um, I think he was 29. He was a armed and duty um, officer. Um, he encountered Robert Howard outside of a home. Um, and forced him into the back of the squad car and they drove to another location and at this location he shot and killed him in the back seat of the squad car and then after that he drove to another location and he had another accomplice um, join him this Joshua Rogers 28 join him and help him move the body outside of the car and into the side of the road um, and you know the motive is unclear. The police haven't released a motive. There's no motive that that has been given out. It's just so interesting to me because and I'm not I don't want to spread any rumors or anything like that. But Robert Howard <clears throat> phone was the key and critical evidence in this whole case. So I think what the police did was they found his phone once the girlfriend gave the phone. They found the phone. They pinged all the towers to see the location of where he went. They tracked back down those locations. And that's when they put the story together. And that's where they ended up at the home. Um, and that's where they were able to put the story together. He was at the home. He went here. He went there. And what what we don't have is a motive. And all we know is that um, Robert Howard was at this house. He had an encounter with Patrick Ferguson, who was the Memphis Police Department, uh, officer for the Memphis Police Department the he was forced into the police squad car now the question is what happened at this home why were you at the home what how do you guys know each other was it a drug deal gone wrong was there some illegal activities going on or were you guys you know um lovers you know and it was something that you kept between you two i don't know it's it, this is really interesting to me and that's why i was reading it and i'm like god damn what the what could have caused the police officer to risk all of your training, all of your experience, your salary, the benefits and the perks that comes with being a police officer go down the drain. Um, <clears throat> what they also found was that on the police officer's phone was um, him doing Google searches of how to clear up DNA. He had bought cinder blocks and apparently, you know, so he can probably tie um, them to his ankles and throw them in the in the river because they found him at an intersection and a bridge. I think it was like the Wolf River Bridge or something in Memphis, Memphis Police Department holes. And then what's even more crazy is that um, he reached out to this guy, Joshua Rogers, and as you can see from the picture, um, Joshua Rogers to 
help him transport the body from the actual location to another location. And so you felt comfortable enough to bring somebody else into what you were doing, meaning that maybe you all were involved in something. You know what I mean? It's so weird. You know, we always come to recognize police officers killing black men as a white on black thing. So in this situation where you have a black police officer killing another black man for no reason, 911 wasn't called, anything like that, it leads you to believe that this had to either be a crime of passion or they were doing some drug dealing or some illegal activities. Um, and so I'm very, very, that it, it piqued my interest. Um, the Memphis Police Department, um, they put out a statement saying that they don't condone this. They um, they move with quick action once they found out it was somebody there of their own. He was released, and instead of him getting a, um, I think he um, he resigned so he can get, you know, he didn't want to be terminated. Probably save some some pensions or some benefits or something, or retain a union attorney or something. Oh no, Robert Howard had three young babies, and so he leaves all of them behind. Um, again, at the beginning of the year, something like this tragically happens. So. Man, I would love to know what, like, what transpired. What was the reason to kill him? And why were you guys at the house? And how long had you known him? And where did y'all meet? Um, I don't know. This is an interesting story. Oh, so he's being charged with um, first degree murder, aggravated kidnapping, abuse of a corpse, and fabricating and tampering with evidence. And so, I mean, just hearing the charges that they, um, that they're, you know, putting on him, abuse of a corpse, fabricating and tampering with evidence, you know, it just sounds like it was premeditated, it was planned, it's something that you thought about carefully. And, you know, again, things like that, it, you know, oftentimes are, have, are crimes of passion. You know, when someone is shooting someone for robbing them, they just kill them. They're not, you know, thinking about cleaning. Well, you know, not the, the common, you know, criminal is not thinking about, you know, okay, should I look up how to clear up DNA and stuff like that? So it appeared to be a, um, a crime of passion. That's what I'm saying. But I'm being very sensitive to this because I don't want anyone to jump down in the comments or anyone who's related to him to feel like I'm saying that, you know, putting um, imposing anything on him. Um, I'm just saying it sounds similar to another story that I remember happening in Chicago. <clears throat> My condolences does go out to the family. Um, they started a GoFundMe page to help with some of the burial costs. Um, I'll, you know, I'll drop the link below if you'd like to support. Um, I will stay tuned to this story. I'll definitely do a part two because I would love to see what has transpired. Yeah, drop down below and let me know what you think. Now, I don't want to be accusatory here. So everything that we state and everything that we say is all of our opinions based on what we've seen and the evidence out there. But to me, it sounds like it was a um, a crime of passion and um and it was very impulsive. But what do you think? What do you think he, what do you think went on here? And um, yeah, hit the like button. And if you are not a subscriber, please consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell, getting all, maybe some um, of the notifications. And until next time, deuces.